Yo everyone, welcome into the video. If you're tuning in to find out whether you should be playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla in 2024 or 2025. Um, the game originally came out in 2020. Well, let me tell you this, let's get into it guys. So, continuing on the storyline on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You're starting off in Norway, obviously as a Viking. You decide that you're going to go off on your own path with your brother Singert. You're going to be travelling off into England from the Norway region, which again is very... It's a bit quite a big area as well in terms of what it's there for. There's only there for a few missions as you venture off into one side of England there. As you head into the main quests there over on England, you're going to be dealing with Danes, Vikings. Each one has its own little area. You could basically say they're like chapters. You've got little chapters everywhere where you're going to decide what regions you want to work with. Each one is leveled up on a power basis. So as you start off, whether you're going to be, like I say, working with the Danes or the Vikings... Each one, whether they're going to be going for power and they want to become more influential in their region, or if it's a redemption. So each one has its own little thing. Now you are traveling, like I said, with your brother Sigurd, which the storyline of you and Sigurd does tie in over the course of 65 to, to 60 hours. Personally, it's took me around 62 hours of just total storyline. A lot of people were talking about the game when it first came out of how grindy it was. Now, they have tried to make it an art, like a RPG element open world game, which we can't expect to be grinding. If you did like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, now I do believe that you will like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 100% you should do. The only difference for me from coming from Odyssey to this game that I did take a little while to get used to was the battle mechanics. Like, i.e. like health bar. Health bar doesn't regen. You need to get rations and... There are some perks that you can pick up in later like, game that will help you pick up on that. As well, if you miss shots in any of the battle mechanics with, with your fighting and you, you're not going to be able to get your shots off. So it's important that you hit your shots on this game. But apart from that, the game is very similar. Now, as we were talking about the similarities between Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the gear is totally different. If you remember, if you played Assassin's Creed Odyssey... You are getting gear constantly and you're breaking down gear into materials to help you in the, in the game. Now, this is where Valhalla is different. Valhalla's gear, you need to go and find it. most of the good gears around the map. There'll be like a, a symbol on the map, which would be like a gold symbol. You need to go around. You'll start off with just a basic set of gear. You need to go around, venture around, picking them up, whether it's weapons or armor or whatever you need. So you'll need to be doing that. And along the way, you'll be picking up... Um, ingots and stuff like that where you which you're going to need to change the level of that gear so obviously you're going to start off on bronze then silver then gold which is like mythical and so with these gears you're going to be able to attach certain things like you if you remember it again in odyssey you can attach certain things whether you want like fire or, or poison or whatever element damage you want to do you can do that here in most cases getting the full set of gear so you'd have different names of gear which you, you're going to want the full set again you're talking five pieces for a full set now each one has a different perk um, different element damages and stuff like that which you don't definitely worth getting I, I, I never suggest mixing gear i always suggest get the full set as quick as possible on certain gears that you can get there's plenty of tutorials online for that okay heading into rations you got rations here which is your health you're going to need to be using them obviously to re get your health back it's not like the other games where your health bar regens it, it doesn't regen in this game so you are going to need, be needing to make the most of that. Again, this costs materials. Same with quivers, which are arrows. You're going to be after using arrow, certain materials to level that up as well. So a quick look at the skill tree. You're going to be looking at this skill tree, thinker, where to start. And that was exactly the same thing. But the good thing about the skill tree is you can reset it at any time you want. But for me, I, I to be fair, I have quite like the style of play that I've managed to do on my first um, iteration of going through these skill trees. So I have literally gone for being a Viking um, in the red there is based around, you know, melee damage and stuff like that. You have sneak attack and then you have ones for arrows. Each one will have different skills that you can later on access and put, put on the bottom for you in battle, which you're going to need the battle meter to fill up. Again, we can see the skills here that I currently have. Skills are different in this game. You need to go around and find the skills. Finding the skills on, on, around the map um, can be pretty easy. Again, it just appears as a gold item. Use the scan button. Again, it's like a heartbeat sensor. I, I don't rely on the bird on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I found the bird to be, you know, I'll be totally honest. It was pretty useless. Pretty useless to bait this time around. So you can see there, little gold armor things. There, your armor. The gold insignias are for ingots to level up your equipment. The book with, like, the F on, their skills. Now, this is the map. The map is really big. Uh, what I done was, guys, at the start of the game, I went to all the fast travel points. 
go to all the fast travel points you can. Uh, it took me around two to three hours to get as many fast travel points. As soon as I started the game, it made life a lot easier. A, a lot easier just going to these fast travel points, getting it all done, and then sticking to the story. I could just fast travel everywhere. I weren't like getting on boats, I weren't get, getting on mounts and traveling around too much, which was awesome. It was well worth the time. And again, going forwards, let's talk about probably one of the, the most annoying things that people will get annoyed at. Using the boat to do raids, yet you're a Viking, it's necessary. It's necessary that we need to do raids. I spent like, again, a five to six hours near the start of the game doing raids, getting as much equipment as possible and materials. Use these materials to upgrade my stronghold here, as you can see. I, I've leveled it up pretty well, and to be fair, looking back, yeah, some parts are good. Worth, totally worth getting, but you get something called Feast Buff, I believe it's called, something like that. It'll give you like certain things like attack damage, this, attack damage, that. But I'll be totally honest, you don't really need it. You don't really need it. You will level up with this game and be OP. If you get the correct gear, I, I definitely wouldn't worry about picking some of that stuff up. I really wouldn't. Well, that's up to you. If you want to get OP, if you want to get OP as quick as possible and you want to grind, you can definitely do that, but you don't have to. Now, going into gear, again, with the gear, there's um, Ubisoft have their own their own line of gears that you can buy, and that that's where a lot of people, you know, will be getting a bit annoyed. Yeah, some pay-to-win content there, but... You don't really need it. Yeah, you get these stones called opals that you can use in the store. Now, there is the little boy that we've just seen here. So if you go to this little boy in your main town, and um, people will probably remember this guy from other Assassin's Creed games. Now, he's basically a vendor that you can get for these opals. He does do contracts as well. So doing the contracts, I believe like two or three come out a day. He will give you these rewards that you can use inside his shop. Now, this is a free way to start collecting some of the items. It will be paid to win, but if you're willing to do some of the grind, and yeah, you can get some really good weapons in there. Whether you're coming back there daily, I believe there's a daily one and a weekly one. Again, linking your Ubisoft account to your Assassin's Creed, totally recommend. There's a load of free items for you to pick up there. 100% suggest that you do it, and you do get some free opals as well, which I managed to pick up a cool steed. A cool steed, which was a polar bear with an ice cream with a rainbow behind them. There's some cool gears you can pick up for free. But if you want to pay as well, you can definitely do that. But again, it's not something I look to do on these type of games. But that is probably one of the parts where a lot of people uh, get a little bit annoyed. Right, here's the shop here, guys. You can take a look at the shop. You get free weekly items as well. Make sure you, you, you're connecting there and doing the free weekly items. I have received some good mythical axes and stuff like that from inside there, which was totally worth doing weekly. So definitely keep an eye on that. Again, you can see there's more stuff where you can pay for. Again, going forwards, I did pick up the, the season pass, guys. If you want to go and pick the season pass up, if you do enjoy Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I suggest that you pick that up. Make sure that you get it on a deal, though. I believe it's around 20 to 30 pounds normally. I'm not too sure what that converts to in dollars. We get two DLCs. I believe it's for Paris and Ireland. Again, there's the other uh, DLC, which is Ragnarok. is still retailing for around £30. Again, the game is four years old. I I'm hoping that they do lower that down shortly. For me, I am not playing £30 for the DLC. I'm not, I I'll wait. I'll wait for the day that they lower that down. It's surely coming at some point in time. But whether you want to buy it or not, that's t it's your money. It, it is totally up to you. Now, again... With the extents of the map, again, we, you say, like I said, you start off in Norway and then we venture off to England. But there are other areas that you will get. Again, I was doing side missions with this game. I was thinking, oh, let me do some side missions while I'm not streaming. Next minute, I'm in, I'm in other places. I'm in the island of Sky or whatever it was. And then one bit, one bit I was with the gods over in another area and stuff like that. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, like I said, we've been to Vinland. We've been to the Isle of Sky. There's loads of other places that you go to. And I honestly just thought that they were side missions. And it turns out for them to be, again, extensive maps. Really, quite large areas for such small missions as well. You can tell that you definitely sunk a lot of time into the game here. Again, the order. If you do remember some of the other Assassin's Creed games, they do have this sort of element where, you know, you have, have some certain faction that's behind, that's meant to be pulling all the strings. It's totally the same in this game. So in this one, we have another faction called the Order, which throughout the game you will get details about and you go on do your assassinations on them or whatever you want to do, you know. Whether you want to do that or not, some of them you do have to do automatically. And, you know, if you want to just carry on doing some of this, which for me, I've com I have probably completed about 40%, 50% there. I, I still need to do some of the rest. And like I said, I am close to the 
I've just finished the main story. I'm heading into the DLC. It's something I need to take care of. So going forwards, graphical wise as well, graphics on Assassin's Creed Valhalla still still held up really well t to this day. And I mean extremely well. And I did rate this game a 7.6. But for me, it's starting to go up the ratings. With the state of open world RPG story narrative games coming out in 2024 and into 2025, I don't see them improving. Uh, if anything, I believe we're going backwards. Um, dialogue, effort about them, the, the, the way they look, are just nowhere near as good as they were in 2020 and before. So, should you play it? it if you've got Xbox, definitely I would suggest picking it up. If you've got the Xbox Game Pass, um, you can get it for free. And then, like I said, if you enjoy the game, pick up the Game Passes and, and you know carry on with it. It should see you through, guys, to the next Assassin's Creed in February. And guys, if you do like the video, I do appreciate any support that we can get going forward. And it's peace out for me. Have a good one, guys. Peace.